Hi guys, back here again to talk about some dolls. If you're new here, this is just a series on my channel where I go over new or upcoming fashion doll releases, give my opinions, say I'm probably not going to buy them, and then end up buying them anyways. I try to do these around like once a month, but sometimes it's just really dry and there's not a whole lot to talk about, so I push it back and I start to work on other things, and then suddenly the doll floodgates open, and here we are. September, October, and it looks like November too. Man, it's just kind of overwhelming, just the sheer amount of stuff here. No sleep. Bus. Club. Another club. Another club. Another club. Plane. Next place. No sleep. Another club, another club, another club. So we have a lot to talk about and even some stuff I forgot to include in my last one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, before we do, obviously I did change the format of these videos. I decided to stick with filming myself. I got a lot of comments on the last one that they preferred it this way. A few that said they did like the old format better, which is valid, but I think this format is kind of, I don't know, important for me. I like that I'm getting more comfortable with the camera. I've never been very confident in my appearance, in my mannerisms, or really my general being, uh, but this is helping. I used to really dread filming myself, like I would get so worked up all day and it would be such a process, but I feel like I enjoy it now, and it's really thanks to you guys, so thank you. Okay, that's enough vulnerability for today. Let's talk about dolls. I always like to start with Barbie, but there's not really any notable Barbie updates. Uh, there's some new fashionistas, and they're fashionistas. They're mostly fine, but it's still the usual lineup of t-shirt dress, dress with weird cutout on the stomach, frills where there should absolutely be no frills. So, yeah, the fashionistas. So, one I forgot to talk about last time and I'm kicking myself for it because I really have so much to say about her. But it's the new American girl in the historical lineup, Claudie Wells. She represents the 1920s, which has been such a highly anticipated time period in the historical lineup, and I'm... I'm pretty disappointed, not gonna lie. Not in Claudie. I think Claudie is perfect. She's so cute. I love her, I love what I've seen of her character, but her collection is pretty disappointing. She just doesn't have a lot of pieces right now, and most of them are like, not historical. They're modern clothes, and not even technically in her collection. Which bothers me, specifically, as a costume design major and historical fashion enthusiast. The 1920s is one of the most misrepresented eras of fashion. You know, everyone has that one pet peeve of theirs that doesn't really matter, but bothers them specifically a whole lot. This is mine. So I was really excited to see some period-accurate 1920s clothes, uh, but I'm not getting that. And compared to Courtney's collection, even her collection at release, and the promotion that American Girl did for Courtney's release, it's really disappointing that Claudie seems to have been a step down from that. But, I don't know, maybe you'll get larger over time. I hope so. What next? How about Disney? Uh, the Disney Store recently put out a few of these uh, big sets. I assume they must be some of the big holiday releases. They're about $100 each. The Frozen set, I think, is mostly recycled stuff. It just doesn't look as good of a value as the others, honestly. The Aladdin one is pretty cool. Especially since Jasmine, you know, her dolls don't tend to be very movie accurate, uh, for better or for worse. The real star of this show is the Little Mermaid set, though. Uh, first off, pretty fantastic value for $100. Second off, a Playline Vanessa doll and that slinky purple dress from the finale. 
uh, finally on a doll. It should not have taken this long. I don't think I'm gonna drop a hundred doll hairs on this, but I am happy to see it. So, the next doll in the big Disney designer series, or rather the most recently released, is Belle. And if you know, you know these dolls are really hit or miss for me. But I do like Bells. I think it accomplishes what this line is going for, which is to put the princesses in looks that are unexpected for them. And this is a really cool look for Belle. I like that she still reads as Belle, which is not something I can say for this next one. So, my problem with this doll. If I just put this image here, and I ask who this is, assuming you don't already know, uh, could you tell me? Because when I first saw this doll, I had literally no clue who it was meant to be. It's Aurora, and it's a nice look. It's a very pretty outfit. But when I buy Disney dolls, I buy them because I like the iconography of the movies and the characters. They're not like Barbie or Bratz to me, where you can just put the characters into any outfit. That's just not who the Disney princesses are to me. So, unfortunately... This doll is a miss for me. Also for Disney, though, is the holiday doll for this year, who is Tinkerbell. And she's cute. I don't really like uh, Christmas dolls or Christmas theming, personally, so I don't really plan on getting her. But I definitely support more Tinkerbell merch, so I'm not mad at her. Uh, speaking of holiday dolls... Uh, Rainbow High's Roxy Grand. She's about $60, I believe. Not an awful price. But this doll bores me. I'm so bored. Nothing about her says collector to me. Like, just looking at her compared to the Rainbow Divas who have the same style of dress, they look just so much more opulent and impressive. And they have second outfits, which Roxy does not. It seems that MGA thinks that collector just means a big empty box with unnecessary functions like lighting up or being able to turn the doll left and right which is interesting because if you look at actual collector dolls the ones on the higher end of the spectrum typically the more expensive you go the more minimal the packaging is like to me as an experienced collector a doll coming in a plain cardboard box tied with a few pieces of ribbon says collector way more than whatever is going on here. Yeah, it's a pass, absolutely. Rhinestones aren't enough to make me want her. I think that's all I have for Rainbow High in this installment, which is weird because usually Rainbow High takes up such a big chunk of these videos. There's some new sports OMG dolls. Uh, the basketball one, Sparkle Star, she's... I've had designers who actually work on these dolls talk to me, message me, or comment on these videos, and first off, it's such an honor. You guys are literally living my dream, so at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I say, you're winning. But it has made me more conscious of just not being like, Oh, this doll is so ugly, she's awful, she's the worst thing I've ever seen. So I'll say, I like the base doll a lot. Her hair color and makeup combo is so cute. And her outfit is just very much not to my taste. Which might just be because I'm allergic to sports. The other one, the tennis one, Court Cutie, I adore this doll. I think tennis outfits are already inherently kind of cute. Which is why in high school that was the only physical education class I chose to take. But I really, really love her. She's so absolutely adorable. There's another OMG doll coming in the Fierce lineup, Cleopatra. Who is Fierce exclusive. She doesn't have a standard OMG doll yet, which is interesting. She is another collector's release. She's $100, which... Yeah, that's a lot. But she is a very, very beautiful doll. I do feel perhaps she's a little over-designed. Like, honestly, I like her more the less she has on. Like, the photo of her without the big overskirt, she just looks so much better to me. And I feel like she 
could be wearing even less. But that said, I like that she has a lot of versatility in her outfits despite having so much on her. So that's not really a criticism. It's just, for me, I don't think I want to pay that much just to have her wearing maybe half of what she comes with. But yeah, she is stunning. She's very beautiful. I think it's interesting that according to the back of the box, she's intended to be like a the Cleopatra, like from history, which just makes me want to see a whole OMG fierce line based on iconic historical women. There's the next round of Bratz repros, and this is just a, such a bizarre way of doing repros to me. They're all from different lines and different packaging and just ever so slightly different from the past release. But I'm not ungrateful. I already bought Kiana. She's right over there. And I'm really happy to own just any Kiana. But I just want to see a new line from Bratz that's not a designer collab. Like just a new Playline release with new designs, new dolls. Because although Bratz is back, it still doesn't feel like Bratz is back. You know? Like, I feel like I'm still waiting for something else to happen. But speaking of designer collabs, there is the upcoming collab with Colt Gaia featuring Chloe and Yasmin. First thing, the packaging and visual representation of these dolls. Amazing. So beautiful. So enticing. The dolls themselves, also very pretty. I love their faces a lot. The outfits, they're alright. I think they're a good representation of Colt Gaia, but the brand's aesthetic is just, it's very much not my personal aesthetic. So I don't think these dolls are doing anything wrong. I'm just on the fence about them for purely personal reasons. But I do maybe want at least one. Maybe Chloe. Maybe. So we have some new Dream Ella dolls, the extra iconic line, and I'm really impressed with them. They're really good. Dreamella, you know, we had a bit of a rough start. I wasn't very nice to her, but it was tough love. I always believed in her, and here she is. I think she's really found herself. These dolls are really, really cute. They're so well designed, and I can really see the improvements in the facial screenings too. And I just think what they are is pretty important. You know, more realistically proportioned dolls in the likeness of adults for a lower price point. Between them and Naturalistas, I'm really happy to see that gap in the market being filled. The extra iconic line also has a minis line coming out. Wonder where they got that idea. But these are cute too. I do like that they're more proportional, the Dream Ella dolls and other mini doll lines tend to be. They do look just like younger versions of the regular girls. So, Monster High. There's a Holiday Collector's doll, a lot of collector dolls this time around, of Draculaura. She's in the G1 style, so I guess Mattel is keeping G1 for the more adult-oriented releases. She's cool. I love the lighter pink in her hair. I do actually like the chunky highlights too. And since I'm not someone who tends to like the traditional Christmas aesthetic, I think that's why I do like this doll more than most holiday dolls. She's blowing this year's holiday Barbie out of the water, that's for sure. But yeah, her outfit is not exceedingly complicated or detailed, but Monster High, G1 especially, usually isn't. And she's definitely giving, like, the classic Monster High flair. She's really cute. There's also going to be a new Skelector set, Frankenstein's Monster and the Bride. And they're cute. I'm sure they'll appeal to fans of the classic horror movies. For me, though, when it comes to things being released on Mattel Creations, I have to really ask myself if I love it. I have to be absolutely dying for it to want to purchase something from Mattel Creations because I'm not subjecting myself to that for something I'm just kind of meh on. And I don't dislike these, but like a lot of the other Skelector dolls, they just don't really look Monster High to me, or at least what I like about Monster High. 
I think the only Skelector doll that's really done that for me is Greta. As for G3, I did make a video going over my thoughts on the first uh, signature wave, so do watch that if you want my thoughts on those. But recently we were alerted to another line coming soon. The Skultimate Secrets line, I believe it's called. Uh, they appeared on Amazon Canada very briefly, just labeled as Innovation Series. But, oh my god. When I saw these, my jaw hit the floor. I'm already a big fan of G3, but I did not expect to get dolls this good right out of the gate, especially from a themed line. These designs are just so good. The extra outfit pieces, the lockers, I just really, really love them all. The outfit quality, uh, the fabric quality, I mean, I know it doesn't look amazing, but speaking to me, I do value interesting designs more than I value fabric quality. A dress can be made from tissue paper for all I care, honestly, as long as it looks good. I mean, I collected Ever After High. So I do think these, for what Mattel is known for currently, are executed really, really well. The outfits and the outfit possibilities and the mix and match potential is just so cool. Claudine in particular is really interesting to me because her outfit reads very, very G1 to me. The color schemes and the prints, it's not the direction I expected them to take with G3 Claudine, but I support it. There are some uh, concerns with one of the design choices. I didn't want to gloss over it because I don't want anyone to think I'm ignoring it entirely. If you don't know, it has to do with the hat Frankie comes with, and I don't really want to say anything too specific, because I know I have a platform, and to say anything definitive would come off as speaking like I have authority on this discussion, which I don't, but people have expressed discomfort with the design of it. So, if that's something that concerns you, or it's something you're unaware of, I ask you to defer to certain voices, uh, specifically Jewish ones, because obviously there are different opinions, and I think it's just our duty as collectors, as people who are spending money on these things, to listen and just get the big picture. And hope that Mattel listens as well and takes that feedback moving forward. But yeah, otherwise, I am just in love with this line. I can't wait to see where G3 goes in the future. And I think that's everything I have on my list for today. As always, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know which dolls you're most excited for, which ones you're buying, which ones are perhaps on your doll -a day wish list, and which ones you'll be skipping out on. And when you're done with that, just be sure to like and subscribe for any future fashion doll content. Now go out and get those dolls. Thank you.